Hope that you're doing well today on this Thursday. So welcome, 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 welcome. My name is Casey Star Long. And so what I try to do every day, I try to do something called um, today's breakfast. But I didn't get a chance to do this video during breakfast time because I was having like crazy, crazy uh, technical issues. So I'm calling this today's lunch. So I'm inviting you to just join me for quote unquote lunch. And um, we're just going to just kind of talk about some things that God has put on my heart. You can see my husband in the background. That is Pastor Long. Yeah. <laughs> He's leaving out. He's on his way to um, do his weekly uh, prison ministry event in Pacific. So um, we bless you, babe, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, we will definitely be lifting y'all up. All right, you guys. So um, one of the things that I really wanted to talk about, and hey, Ken, I see that you're on. Hello, hello, hello. Um, so anyway, I got distracted seeing my husband in the background. But so what I try to do is basically use um, the internet. I try to use whatever God gives me to point the way to him. And so I do these breakfasts every day, um, which is really where I share an encouraging word. But guess what? Today is like lunchtime. So we're going to call it today's lunch. And so our topic today, we're going to be talking about um, the resignation, the announcement that our governor in the state of Missouri, Eric Greitens, um, he's made the decision that he is going to actually resign uh, this Friday. He's going to resign from public office. And for those of you that maybe you've been living um, under a rock or maybe you're not from Missouri and um, you just aren't familiar with what's been taking place in Missouri, um, our governor, Eric Greitens, who's a first time ever political candidate, um, he was elected as governor in the state of Missouri from the Republican Party and um, seems to have just a really great um, background, a very accomplished background, a Rhodes Scholar, uh, a Navy SEAL. He's an author, um, started a nonprofit for veterans, um, just seems to have just kind of really an impressive resume. Um, but he found himself um, in, a, in a scandal really, and um, it has really rocked our local media. And basically the scandal, um, it has been on for about four months and the scandal involved uh, claims of him having a sexual relationship uh, with his hairstylist. Um, this was prior before being elected to governor, but he had um, a sexual relationship outside of marriage. And um, it, it has been alleged that he took an explicit photo um, of the woman without her permission. And um, also um, he has been alleged to have used, misused, um, a I guess a charity, a public charity list using that for um, trying to get political donations. And so all of that is illegal, okay? And so, um, so uh, there has been a lot of court issues and just kind of a lot of stuff going on in the media. And um, it has been announced that a deal was made with our St. Louis uh, prosecuting attorney um, with the governor and the governor has agreed to resign. All right. So that's kind of the backstory. And um, I've been following things in the media. And for those of you that you may be familiar with my story is that before I became a pastor and before I got involved in ministry, um, I was actually a politician in the city of St. Louis. So I was on the St. Louis Board of Aldermen, which is a local level, a local level of politics. Um, never had a chance to meet um, Eric Greitens. He came on the scene way, way after um, I left politics. And a lot of people ask me all the time, they're like, you know, Casey, you seem to have such a, you know, thriving career in politics. Will you ever go back? You know, um, it, all, all, you know, people ask those types of questions. And my response is always like, um, I never know what, you know, God has in store, but really, at least in this season, I really feel led to um, pray uh, for our government leaders. Um, just really feel led to pray for our government leaders and to um, just lift them up in prayer and uh, just kind of use my authority that way as a believer. And um, I also have just a, a real heart for individuals who find themselves in the midst of a scandal. <laughs> and so it can be said that our governor, he has really found himself in the midst of a scandal. Um, I mean, the front page of papers, um, the leading of news stories, both here locally in St. Louis and uh, nationally. Um, I just have a heart 
for people who find themselves in difficult situations. And I guess I have a heart. I've developed that heart because um, I guess it was in 2013 or 2014, I found myself in the midst of a scandal um, when I admitted um, embezzling campaign funds and really, really, really um, lost a lot. So I actually resigned from uh, my position as an alderman and was on the front page of the paper and on news stories. And, um, you know, I always say that it was truly a public scandal what I went through, um, but God used that for good. Um, it's not something that, you know, I would ever want to go through ever again, but um, I do feel like it was necessary, um, that that was one of the situations where I really saw that God was faithful, um, that I had put a lot of confidence in my political career. I had put a lot of confidence in the title and in the position that I held. And guess what? When all of that came crumbling down, all I had left really was the Lord, um, that he proved to be just uh, an unshakable foundation and he proved to be true to his word. So that's why I say like that scandal was, it was actually good for me. It ended up working out for my good. And um, God's word is true. Um, those that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose, you know, things will work out um, for, for their good. But I wanted to talk um, this afternoon about what our response is to what has happened to our governor. And when I say our response, I'm talking to believers. Um, I know that there may be some unbelievers that may tune in to this broadcast and we bless you, amen. But I'm really talking to the church. You know, what is our response um, when the governor of our state makes the decision to resign um, under, under a scandal? And um, the reason why um, I, I wanted to talk about this is because my heart got grieved. My heart became grieved. Um, I saw a couple of news reports and I just, you know, just as far as like the response of some of our leaders and just some of the public um, regarding the announcement that our governor was going to resign and uh, my heart became grieved. So I made a couple of notes. And um, so when the announcement was made that our governor was going to resign, our mayor, Lida Cruson, the first uh, female mayor in the city of St. Louis, she tweeted from her account. She says, I thank the governor for his service. I know this was a hard decision. My hope is, is that we get back to working for the people and doing the business of the state. So she um, she releases just kind of like a, a general tweet um, that many people in politics uh, usually will send out um, saying, you know what? Thank you, governor, for your service. I'm sure this was a hard decision, but I hope that we get back to basically the issues working for the people of the state. Not a problem, a great statement. Um, but news reports, Channel 4, Channel 5, um, and the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, they actually um, did some news concerning the response of the people uh, to our mayor's tweet. And um, it says that the tweet drew criticism. It drew criticism from elected officials, it drew criticism from constituents that people were actually outraged with our mayor's tweet because they said that she was too nice. And I understand that um, many people are angry, many people are disappointed um, because what has happened um, with our governor. And I guess some people are upset because, you know, maybe they feel like he wasn't contrite enough or what, what for every reason. And I don't want to even get into to that because I feel like our governor, he's he's having to deal with the consequences. Um, you know, he's resigning. Um, I'm sure that, you know, a lot of devastation has taken place in his family. Um, and so I feel like God knows how to God knows how to deal with us. So I won't even talk about that. But what I want to talk about is our response that when somebody like another leader um, makes an effort to be civil towards someone and then the community gets in an outrage, I think like that that, um, that that grieved me because I said, you know what, what's wrong with just being civil and thanking someone for, for their service? Whether or not they may be from a different political party, um, this man was still elected as governor and I feel like you should just honor people regardless of what they may have gone through. Um, and so the newspaper reported about a, a state rep being really upset um, with our mayor's response. And so there was so much criticism that it says the next day, um, our, our mayor, you know, she, um, she issued another response. And this is what she said. 
quote it. Um, it says, it is said that the road to hell is paved with good intention. Yesterday, I posted a tweet intended to begin the healing needed from inexcusable, embarrassing, and disgusting actions of Governor Eric Greitens. It was well intended, but it missed the mark. I probably should have left civility at the door and said, thank goodness Governor Greitens got the message that violating the trust of his family, his supporters, his staff, and the voters is inexcusable. I should have said it's about time and overdue. But I considered the victims, the woman whom he assaulted, his wife, his children, his many supporters who believed in him, and the people of the state of Missouri who rightly expected that their governor would comport himself honorably. Let there be no doubt, I condemn Eric Greitens' behavior. I do not celebrate his downfall, but I'm hopeful that we can begin a new chapter with Governor Mike Parson. And so, um, you know, it's not easy being a politician. I can't imagine um, as a mayor, all the different people that are in your ear and you're trying to appease this person, you're trying to appease that person. Um, but I guess I, I became disheartened um, that our mayor felt that, you know, she had to, to go back and not recant her initial statement, but when she says, you know what, I probably should have left civility at the door and just said, thank goodness, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, what, what does this mean for our region um, when people feel like it's okay to leave civility at the door? What does this mean when the people are pressing upon our leader saying, don't be civil, you know, be mad, be angry, kick somebody while they're down? What, what does that mean for us as a community? And so that's why I just wanted to have this discussion today during lunchtime, you know, about what is our response as Christians when the leader of our state, whether or not you voted for him or, you know, whether or not um, he was from your political party, um, that when a leader makes a decision to resign and that there is a vacancy at the head, that affects us all. That affects us all. And, you know, I just want to encourage us to look at things spiritually from a spiritually perspective and not just a natural perspective, because from a natural perspective, you'll start looking at things from um, the perspective of a political party or, you know, a gender or a race or anything like that. But if we look at things spiritually, we know that the word of God talks about that the oil flows from the top down. And, um, you know, if there, there if there's a scandal um, at the top, that that affects us all. And um, I think it's what what's just really important for us as believers is to um, to show honor. And sometimes. Um, and, you know, and even being civil. Um, and, you know, I, I, I like how um, our mayor, you know, how she talked about that, you know, she she condemned our governor's actions. Um, but she says, I don't celebrate his downfall. And I think that that's also really important, too. And I'm so glad that she put that in there, because I think that if we're not careful, that we'll start emulating the world um, as believers and start really wanting to kick people when they're down. Um, I remember that um, when I went through my scandal and uh, there were a lot of news reporters trying to call me and, and talk to me and I didn't want to give any quotes. I, I um, released a statement and just apologized for, for what I did. And I apologized to my constituents and um, the press, you know, they, they wanted more. And I was like, I'm not I'm not, you know, releasing any more statements. I've said what I what I needed to say. I really would like to just move on. And so they started asking. Uh, different other elected officials. And um, they asked um, the mayor at the time, Mayor Francis Slay, what his thoughts were. And I don't remember his exact comment, but what I remember was that his comment was gracious. It was something to the effect like, you know, this is really unfortunate what has happened um, to, to Casey. And um, it wasn't like we wish her the best, but we really don't have anything else to say at this time. And um, when you live in a culture where, especially in politics, where people like stab you in the back and then twist it, that could have been an opportunity um, for him to do that to me. Um, but he passed on that. And um, I'll never forget that. And I appreciate, I appreciate that. Um, that sometimes it's just good to just kind of have compassion and say something nice and then move on. And I guess my purpose of this and, and having this conversation is for us to remember to be civil and for us to pray for our leaders. Um, that our leaders won't take the bait, that there's this crowd like crucify him, crucify him. Don't be nice. You know, kick him. You know, he needs to get what he deserves. 
But I tell you what, God knows how to make sure people get what they deserve. Um, God knows how to make sure people don't escape punishment. His arm is not too short um, to teach people a lesson. And, uh, you know, I believe that, you know, God is working on our governor. Our governor has been, has professed himself to be a believer. And um, I think even with this um, resignation, you know, God is moving in, in his own way. Um, but I think we have to be careful that our response as believers is to be uh, compassionate um, and to be civil. And um, I really think it's important for us to encourage our leaders to give them the confidence and the courage to let them know it's okay to be civil, um, to not provoke our leaders to be mean <laughs> to others. And so that was what was on my heart. You know, um, one of the headlines in the African American newspaper um, in St. Louis, it said, Cruson is wrong to thank the governor for, for his service. I just feel like, I feel like there's, you, there's no harm in ever being nice. There's no harm in ever showing honor. There's no harm in ever thanking someone for their service. There's no harm in ever doing that. Um, so it just kind of makes me think, you know, well, what's the culture of this world? <laughs> and um, for us as believers to just remember to be bright lights, um, to show love. And showing love doesn't mean that we agree with everything that people, that everyone does. It's okay to show love. It's, it's okay to be nice. It's okay to be civil. Amen. So that is that is just kind of what I wanted to share. I'm going to go through y'all comments. All right. Kim said, God bless you, Casey. God bless you, Kim. And like Rochelle is absolutely right. Our leaders need continual prayer. Rashawn, Pastor Jordan says, we often don't apply grace until it's our failure that needs it. Pastor, you are absolutely right. Um, when I went through my scandal, my prayer to God was, Lord, all I ask is, because I thought at the time, I thought at the time I was really going to have to go to prison. Like I, I really thought I was facing prison. And I, I remember talking to God and I said, well, God, whatever, whatever is the outcome, I just want you to use this for your glory. And so I feel like me having to go through what I went through and um, just seeing how people gave me grace. And then there were some that that didn't. But those that did give me grace, I really appreciated it. And um, that's the perspective. That's the vein that I come from. Um, so I've been covering uh, Governor Greitens and his family, his wife, Sheena, and their children. Um, also covering the victims as well. Um, but I do have a soft spot <laughs> for those that go through public scandals. I do. Um, and so I just believe that God is going to use this for his glory. And we as believers... Um, we need to really be intentional about lifting up our leaders and then also asking God, you know, well, what's going on behind the scenes? God, what do I need to see? Lord, help me to discern, you know, what's really going on. And, you know, when God began to just show me like the different comments and things like that, God put on my heart is like, Casey, the hearts of people are cold. And, you know, the Bible talks about in Matthew chapter 24, that in the last days, you know, hearts, hearts will grow cold. And um, I really feel like my purpose of doing this video is to just challenge you um, as a member of the church, the body of Christ, to not let our hearts grow cold. That when we see um, our neighbors, our community, basically, you know, provoking our leaders saying, don't be civil. We don't want you to be civil. And then our leaders go around and um, send a new statement that isn't as civil um, as they initially want it to be. You know, um, that that's a concern. That's a heart issue. So we, we definitely want to um, pray for pray for our leaders and, and pray for those in positions of leadership um, because we know it's not something that's easy. OK, Reba says I may be wrong, but I felt like what he had done in the past was none of my business, that that was between him and God. Amen. April Phillips, thank you for your testimony. All right, Sister Yvonne. All right. Yeah. So, all right. So these are just some of the comments. Well, I thank you guys for just tuning in and just having lunch with me. This was just something on my heart that I just wanted to share uh, with you guys about, um, you know, what the resignation of our governor, what that means for us um, in the body of Christ and really our response as a church. And what I really feel God is saying um, is to pray for the hearts, pray for the hearts of our leaders. Um, let us strengthen them and encourage them through prayer um, and, and let them know that um, not to bow down to the pressure of people, that it's OK to be nice. It's OK to do the right thing. Um, you know, people please. And that's, that's a whole other that's a whole other video. And that's one of the things that I enjoy not being a politician. 
um, anymore is because I can just be myself. I can say what I want to say, um, and I don't have to worry about that. Um, but there are some folks who have made the decision that they want to serve us, and it can be hard um, to, to try to appeal to different constituencies. So we definitely want to lift up our elected officials and cover them in prayer. Also, you guys, I want to make sure you know about uh, When St. Louis Prays. Uh, when St. Louis Prays is a monthly uh, prayer gathering where myself, along with other believers, we come out and we pray for the city of St. Louis, the entire St. Louis region, the first Friday of every month. And so on Friday, June the 1st, we're going to be praying at uh, Trinity, Trinity uh, Christian Fellowship Church, which is located in South City. You are invited to come in. We're going to make sure that we spend some intentional time covering our city and also covering our government leaders and um, also our state. OK, so I want to invite you to come out. It's completely casual. You can just come as you are. Well, you guys, I'm not going to take up too much of your time any longer, but I am going to close this out in prayer. All right. Because prayer is so important. So, God, I just thank you, Lord, um, for for this for technology and um, Lord, for just this platform for me to share, God, what you placed on my heart. Um, Lord, I pray, God, that the words that you have given me, that Lord, you will just place your anointing upon them, God. There are going to be people, be people who watch this on the replay. There are people who are watching this now. Um, and I just pray, Lord, that you just speak and you touch the hearts. Lord, we cover our governor. Lord, we cover his wife. We cover his children. Lord, we cover, Lord, uh, Lieutenant Governor Mike Parsons, Lord, who will step into this new role on Friday. God, we know that you have a good plan for our state. And Father God, we are just in agreement. God, we pray, Lord, for a settling um, over our state, over our region. God, we pray, Lord, for strong leadership. Father, um, you, you've talked to me, Lord, um, in our prayer time about just the spirit of murder. Um, that wants to exist over the city uh, with guns and killing. But God, there's also a spirit of murder, Lord, um, through the mouths of us that we we murder each other. We assassinate characters God, we accuse each other. And so, Lord, I just pray, God, for love um, to permeate um, over this region. God, I pray, Lord, for a spirit of love. God, I pray, Lord, that you start in us or as believers, that, God, you do a work in our hearts, that Lord, our hearts will be clean, Father, that we desire the best for everyone. We desire the best for our state. When one wins, we all win. So God, I just pray, Lord, that um, something that was said over this broadcast, God, will just touch the hearts of your people, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, we lift up our mayor. We lift up our, all of our elected officials, Father. God, give them boldness, give them courage, Father. Lord, touch their hearts, Father, in the name of Jesus. And um, God, we just give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys. Well, that was the bre breakfast. Well, not the breakfast. That was the lunch for today. I pray that you enjoyed that. I will be back for tomorrow during breakfast time. I'll be back tomorrow for breakfast time to just share what God places on my heart to encourage you. All right. Be blessed. Enjoy the rest of your day.